Hi everyone. Now I'm going to be tying. I'll give you now. I'm going to be tying this fly here. Oh, the shrimp pattern anyway. This is a basically a well, it's a request in a way. Uh, recently did a video on this fly, this pattern. This is the Rogan's Gosling, which is a it's a pattern. It gives the impression of a mayfly, but it's a very good sea trout fly. The Gosling uh, and it's. It works, uh, when I first tied, or first fished these as well, it was in the Ern estuary, which is uh, basically just the estuary where the sea trout come in off the tide. And this was the best fly, on the dropper, and uh, when you could see it in the water, it really gave a great impression of a shrimp, uh, as far as that's what I felt it looked like. Lovely pattern, great colour combination. Now, when I'm, I'm going to filmed it and put it on YouTube, I did say all you need to do is put eyes on it. So what I did was I tied a couple um, with, with eyes, one with a bead uh, and eyes at the back because uh, it gives that impression just to, if you wanted to try it. And then I got asked could I, could I film the one with the bead? So instead of filming another, the same fly, uh, obviously I decided just to tie uh, this one, the saltwater version. So basically it's the same pattern but the colour combination uh, is a nice colour. It's a colour I've used for shrimp, uh, for saltwater flies obviously. Uh, and saltwater fishing and especially winter months in certain parts of the, the Europe. This is this style of fly works extremely well. So, But it was just the eye the, to talk about and obviously by just simply putting eyes on a mayfly gave impression of shrimp. And if you look at this, if I bring this down here, if you imagine this getting pulled, you basically got very shrimpy like eyes. It's sort of ideal and you can see why it worked. By adding the bead gives it a kick and gets it deeper. So so it goes further down. So we get that lovely shape. And this is what this is going to be. So I rumble through my materials, look at the materials I had and I thought right so I can tie this. Uh, this is the last hook and the last uh, sort of bead, pink bead that I had is a 4mm. But the hook I'm using, this is uh, from Airex. It's a shrimp hook. It's got this nice bend, which basically, when you tie the fly, it encourages it to flip up just because of the, the bend in the hook. So I'm going to be tying it. As I say, it's just basically a mayfly, but tied in a colour combination. So when you start at the head area here, I'm just going to build up some thread a wee bit. That'll help stop the bead but sort of come down the shank. And then I'm going to wind my thread down to just slightly by uh, the point of the hook. So just about about there. So if I let my thread go, you can see a good mill or so. Just going to put wax on my thread. Now the feelers, in this case, I'm going to be using pheasant tail just like I would do if, I was a, if it was a mayfly. But I just happen to have this colour. This is bleached and dyed and came from vineyards. It's a kind of coral, which is ideal. So I'm here, a good half dozen or more fibres here. I'd always put a wee bit extra on. Pull them out 90 degrees and then turn them off. I'm just going to roll it in my fingers. This will help separate them. Oh, well, should anyway. There's a couple of broken ones there. I'm just going to go back. A couple of broken, you don't want the broken ends. There we are, that's better. So I say a good half dozen or so. Then roll it. And then tie them on. Make sure they're secure. Lengthwise, well they could be as short as long as you like. I've got a good hook length plus there, about a hook and a half. Just going to open these fibres out just to see how they sit. Now you don't have to use pheasant tail, I'm just sticking to the same theme that being a mayfly style, so mayflies especially in Ireland, are, uh, the tails are always usually pheasant tail. Now for the eyes, I'm using easy shrimp eyes, these ones, and the smaller ones, are the mayfly there, I tied them on the small. Uh, these are the easy shrimp, but this is the kind of standard size, and I'm just using black. So these are great eyes, these are great to, to tie in. Very simple, I've got a small ridge, tapered, so it helps to form a shape. 
scratch this on the top. I'm just going to quickly run it up so I get it in a position so it's sitting. That's fine. I'm going to wax my thread and then secure it down nice and tight. There's going to be plenty of turns to hold this anyway because it'll be dubbing and ribs getting tied on as well. Or a rib, sorry. Now I like the fire orange colour. Just make sure it's sitting level. Nice and tight. Make sure that's not going to move. It's perfect. It's ideal. The rib of the fly, I'm actually using, this is a small oval silver tinsel. You could use a lot of things for doing this. You could to rub the fly, so I'm just going to catch your length on. For the body, uh, this is a new dubbing from Fool and Mill. I thought it was an ideal colour. Fool and Mill, it's called Voodoo, and you see it's called Salty Pink or Pale Pink UV. It's a, it's a nice colour, it's a subtle pink, very subtle. Like uh, You can see it, but it's, but it's so, as I say, it's very light, but it's enough. Just take my thread up a wee bit here, and the reason I like to do that is so I like to work a wee bit towards the eyes and then come up. I'm just going to, I'm just building up some dubbing onto the thread here, so I can stretch out the dubbing, see where I am, work towards the eyes a wee bit. And as I say, I don't mind the pink there. Sorry, the fire on showing through. Uh, even if it's a small tag or just a hot spot at the eyes, just leave it. Now the body can be as heavy or as thin as you like. When it more shrimpy like, obviously you would build it up here and tape it towards the back. But I'm just kind of keeping it kind of sort of levelish. So just working it way through. Just tightening the dubbing up when I need to. Uh, just a wee quick look, I'm taking a wee drop more at the, the front here. So it's going to come up a wee bit and then come through. Just that step where the, the eyes were. You give yourself, just tidying that area up, uh, enough room to tie in. I've got obviously the hackle for the body, I've got uh, two hackles at the front. Just the highlight hackle and then the front hackle. So just be careful you give, give yourself enough room. Now I'm just using, this is a Chinese, it's both Chinese necks I'm going to be using. These are cock necks. Uh, these these came from Vineyards. This is a, it's just a coral. It's a nice colour. Now the legs can be, these are just the small legs you would see under the shrimp. So they're not too long. Take away the fluff. See your trim. Wax my thread so I've got plenty of grip. Just enough stem there to catch it in. Tidy this area up. So I, want, I always like a turn or two to the top. And then, to say, you could palmer it as thick or as light as you want. So there's three turns there. Coming into the fourth turn. I'm just going to use my, bring my rib up through to palmer to hold it in. And then you want to rib the body. can be good half dozen turns or so to give that segment a segmented look that you would see in a shrimp and then secure in your rib trim this draw away tip of the hackle trim now I want to bring out some of the dubbing now I'm tying it quite light this is you can, as I say you can make it a bit heavier if you want using velcro here just to rough it up and bring out some of the UV, some of the dubbing. Again it gives the impression of the, the fine legs. Just draw this back. Now to hold it back, just I've got the hair dryer, I'll show you which. As you can see it'll you can see the shape, it's a bit better. It's ideal. And it can opens the fibre out as well, it gives it a nice shape. And then to give it, same as I did with the on the Mayfly, to warm it up I use a hot orange. 
just at the throat here, just below the hackle, the front hackle. I'm going to use, in this case, because of the corally pinky colour, I'm using this fluorescent, this is fluorescent red. It's the same cape, the rooster-like cape, in like that. Again, I'm just going to remove the fluff at the base, I've got a nice remains of the stem there, are catching that on. Just tidy up this area. Now, two to three turns, it's up to yourself, or even a single turn, it's up to you. Now, I'm just going to wind it through, it depends on the feather. I'm a bit of warmth there, so a good three, four turns there. As I say, if it was a thicker fibre than this hackle, I'd probably do less turns. Let's screw that in. Just fold it back the tip there and trim it away. Again, you could just draw it back with the, the hairdryer. Rub your fingers through it. It just kind of warms it up. Uh, bring, you're not doing that much to it other than when you wind the hackle, it, it kind of catches the fibres a wee bit. By heating it up, it just brings them back to the kind of normal shape. Uh, feather. Uh, I've got that. To select the feathers now. This one could be a medium to a large. When you're buying these feathers, uh, you're looking for. Yeah, I bought them for cook salt. And they're called silver mallard. I blew away my feather there with the hairdryer. That's the problem with the, the hairdryer. You won't blow away your feathers. <laughs> I'm just going to, maybe that. The nice feather. Now these, I'll show you the, the packet that came in. Uh, silver mallard it's called. And you got a big, big packet. It's just, uh, I'm not sure it's a while ago since I bought these. Um, but they're nice feathers. So you're looking for a reasonable length. So you can always bring the the fibre straight out, which is a wee quick check. Now you can see, I'm looking at the length here, now I need some of the fibre. Now that wee bit short, uh, so I want the fibre to go so here. And that's why you, when you order uh, from Cooksill and you want to tie the larger size, you make sure yeah, they're extra large. And they, that's a mixed bag I've got there. Let's check again. That's better. Let's see what better. I don't want it too heavy, so I'm going to take away what I don't need. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So I just draw back the fibres that I want. Just trim away the tip here so I've got enough to tie it on. Just wax your thread. Secure it in. And then, obviously, with the natural fibre on the front of the feather facing towards the eye, just fold it so you don't catch any. And then draw back the fibres as you wind one turn in front of the other, up against the bead. Come round with a couple of turns, secure it in. Now, I'm actually going to fold back the stem here and just build up the thread. Just Draw the butt, just draw the, the stem back, I'll, I'll build up. Now, I don't mind that thread colour because I want that. Now you could put a wee bit of dubbing on there. Now I'm just going to trim this away first. You could tidy it up a wee bit of dubbing, you could use the same dubbing if you want. Uh, I'm just going to draw this back in again. Because you wind the hackle, it, it catches it as you wind. So, by a wee bit of heat, I'll just draw it where it should sit. Just bring out the fibre. Just all I do is bring them out. So I bring them back round to where they should be sitting. And you see the shape there. And you can draw this in. Once this has been fished, you can see that nice shrimpy-like shape. Now, as I say, you could just leave the head like that. Which is fine, or you could put a wee bit of dubbing on it. I mean, it's it's reasonably simple. Just the same dubbing we did in body. Just lightly dub it on. If you want to hide it anyway, but I don't think you need to. But anyway, just two or three turns. So it'll take away 
and then uh, you could use super glue or varnish. Super glue is the strongest, so I'll get super glue here. Just run it down the thread. Best to do a turn or two. I put a layer in there, and then what finish? And then that you got to do it quick because it will stick if you don't. And there we are, and that's basically the Mayfly style shrimp tied with the bead. As I say, I did get asked a lot about the bead. Going to do it now. I'm going to show you basically what happens with this hook is that because of the bead, it'll flip the fly, it'll flip it like this and get it to sit. Now, when it's been pulled, what will happen is the fibre will get drawn down, much like this. If you imagine that shrimpy like shape, there's the legs, so you've got the nice legs at the back, you've got the colours coming through the shrimp. And you get that nice shape, so it, it, that's why the fly works so well. Uh, adding the bead just gives you obviously one to get down, one without the bead, it gives you a mid water or so. It just depends on what line you're using, the sinking line or whatever, uh, what depth you get it. But if you want to kick this off a uh, say floating line, even I, I'm quite happy to put this on a floating line, this will drop down and it'll just flick because of the bead, it gives you. And you can get it to the depth. It just depends on which way you want to fish it. Uh, I'll just call it the mayfly shrimp, or if you want to call it the mayfly shrimp. The colour combination is a corally pink. Uh, so there you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.